Okay, so uh, I, I don't think I need to explain why optimization uh, frequently uh, goes <coughs> together with uh, simulation modeling. Uh, so in any logic, you have a built-in optimizer. We, we're not the optimizer vendor. Optimizer comes from uh, American company uh, Optech, and it's called OptQuest. It's the same optimizer that is built into Arena software. And I think it is the same that is built in probably ProModel and you know maybe ten other simulation tools. And it's the same optimizer that it, that you find in uh, Crystal Ball. So. Uh, Optimizer, uh, in this case, in when it's used, it runs as a master application that controls the simulation model. You tell the optimizer, here's my objective, minimize or maximize, uh, here are my constraints, here is the model, and I can vary such and such parameters, or you can vary such and such parameters. Optimizer will run the model multiple times, search, in the parameter space uh, and finds a good solution or let's say suboptimal uh, solution, whatever. Uh, why suboptimal? Because the parameter space can be huge and you, you're never uh, can be, can, uh, unless the case is very, very simple. Uh, uh, nobody can guarantee that you will able to find the optimal solution in finite time. Uh, the optimizers are pretty smart pieces of software because they are um, programmed to work with local minimums and maximums uh, with, you know, um, very uh, complicated, uh, to work in very complicated parameter spaces. And I will demonstrate the usage of the optimizer on a small example. Um, which is again a part of any logic uh, distribution set. It's called uh, activity-based costing. I'll first run this simulation without just a simple simulation experiment. Uh, it's a simple abstract, uh, let's say, manufacturing facility where the parts are coming in processed and uh, go out of this um, uh, this manufacturing uh, section or factory floor. Uh, we have uh, several parameters here. Capacity of resource A, maybe workers or, I don't know, pieces of equipment. Capacity of resource B, the, uh, let's say, the type of machine here maybe, I don't know, an oven, uh, and the type of conveyor. Uh, the type of conveyor uh, actually um, affects uh, this, the processing speed, but also have different costs. And we will be optimizing the processing cost uh, per, per part. Up there, in this um, horizontal bar chart, you have the total cost, total processing cost, which at the moment, with this parameter settings, is 180 something dollars. And here's its breakdown. So, this is the uh, transportation time, the uh, processing time, waiting time, and this is the resource idle time, which still this cost is allocated to uh, according to ABC costing, activity based costing uh, model to the parts. So what I can do manually while the model is running, I can, uh, let's say, experiment with uh, resource capacities. I change the uh, number of workers here, reduce them a little bit, and you see that the, uh, the idle time reduced and the total cost uh, reduced as well. I can uh, make the, uh, buy a more, uh, a faster conveyor, but it's no good really because uh, although it really conveys and it is faster, but it uh, at the same time increased my cost per unit, etc. So 
I can change the parameters manually and see how it affects the cost, but I can also submit this problem to the uh, optimizer. This is the uh, optimization experiment setup. So basically this is the uh, analogic interface to OptQuest. Objective is to minimize the total cost per product. Total cost per product is the function that is calculated in the model. We can look at this function. Um, I think it should be somewhere in the main object. Functions. Yes, total cost per product. Uh, it's a simple function that returns the uh, sum of Mm, other costs. Back to the optimization experiment. Oops, no. I wanted uh, this guy. So, uh, objective. Maximum number of iterations. The optimizer is allowed to do 500 iterations. And then, the main thing is parameters. The optimizer is allowed to vary these four parameters. Two of them are continuous. Two of them are discrete, so it's a mixture, discrete, continuous, parameter space. Minimum, maximum value, and uh, step. In this case, step is 1. In the case of continuous parameter, step is a 0. What? Yes? Uh, iteration count is in, uh, the max number of uh, calls to yeah. the simulation? The, the optimizer will uh, stop after doing 500 of iterations, no matter what. Uh, you can increase this, you can turn this off, then the optimizer would itself decide when to stop. Sometimes the uh, optimizer says, okay, I think I've done my best, I stop here. Um, all right. Uh, let's run optimization. It's finished already. Uh, without the animation, uh, the model really is running fast. So optimizer already was able to perform, well, for some reason, 504 iterations, not 500. Maybe I uh, uh, rechecked this checkbox. I don't remember. This is the very uh, illustrative graph of the iteration uh, of the optimization progress. Our objective function is uh, this brown line. We're minimizing the cost per product. Okay, so it goes down. Whenever optimizer finds uh, a parameter combination that is better than previous, uh, this, uh, this line goes down. But uh, the optimizer is searching in the space of these four parameters, four dimensional parameter space. And because the optimizer does not know anything about the shape of the objective function, it would you know, try in different parts of the parameter space. And you can see that, okay, the optimizer found that good solution, worked around it a little bit, then uh, he, it decided to jump to somewhere else to change the value of a certain parameter or maybe a couple of parameters to look in different part of parameter space. So these, uh, let's say, um, unsuccessful uh, tries and each dot here corresponds to a single simulation run. Okay? Uh, these are attempts of the optimizer to choose different points in the uh, four-dimensional parameter space. Am I making sense here? Does that... Does that... Okay. So uh, that's how the optimizer works. Uh, you can also uh, specify uh, constraints and requirements, for example, the queues should not overflow in our manufacturing system. And this, I think, is one of the requirements which are uh, defined in the, uh, yeah, in here. So constraints and requirements are also part of the optimizer interface. Uh, okay, guys, I think we're finished for the first part and uh, if uh, two short questions I can answer at this time
could you please click on replications? So mm -hmm. yes, the uh, if you have random variables in the model. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if your model is uh, stochastic and you're optimizing under uncertainty, then of course you have to use uh, uh, replications and this is the uh, uh, interface to defining the uh, number of replications. Okay, so you can mm -hmm. define mm -hmm. okay. uh, Yes? Uh, is there any added value of using OptQuest in your software compared to using it in Aruna or is it the same uh, performance? Oh, it's the same software. It's the same software. Same software. You have just changed your interface. To the it's uh, the uh, the of course is the same here. Well, here is is Java. Uh, in Arena, I guess it's uh, C. But well, w there is one advantage because you can export models with OptQuest and just publish them on the web, run them on any any machine. Because it's Java, it's cross-platform, and it's. Uh, the model with the optimizer can be separated from the model editor and put on other machines. So that's probably the, uh, the real advantage of using Java OptQuest. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we're done for the first part. Uh, and uh, coffee break and... Yes, it's time for the coffee break. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm.